Good morning, guys. Welcome to today's edition of uh, Bull vs. Bears, the FX briefing. My name is Alejandro Sombrano, analyst with uh, dailyfx.com. Uh, we should be up and running. Let me just ensure that we are. As soon as we get that confirmed, we're going to get going. The chat box is working. You should be able to see it. But I know that we've been having some issues and difficulties with it over the last day or so. Good. So I can see the chat box is working. Good. So guys, let's just get going here. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to give you guys a quick update on the markets as we always do. Um, going to look at the main currencies, the main commodities, and the main uh, equity indices uh, as we always do at this time of the day. Also, please note, uh, today is going to be the, the last uh, bull versus bears uh, webinar because um, uh, I'm not going to be here uh, as I return or after the bank holiday uh, next uh, week. I'm going to be uh, working on some new projects uh, on my own and will therefore not be working on for daily effects any longer. It's been really good to, to you know, be hosting these webinars. We've been doing this for quite a few years now. It's always been fun and very good interaction with uh, you guys. And uh, at one point, I'm not sure when, but I guess they will replace these webinars. Maybe Paul Robinson or some of my other colleagues will be hosting an early webinar for you. But it hasn't been decided and it's something I'm, I'm not involved in. So that's something to, to note. Uh, but now, guys, let's just uh, look at the markets as we always do. And let's begin with the uh, euro versus the US dollar. And uh, the price is bearish below 112.48, which is more or less the high here seen two days ago on uh, uh, May 23rd. Uh, price moved down to the first level we looked at, uh, I was looking at at least, uh, which was the 111.45 level. And, uh, you know, price reached its levels yesterday, hasn't been too much training going on this morning. Um, and I think it has to do primarily with the fact that we haven't had a, a pullback. Uh, so I. Uh, I guess that we might have a bit of a pullback. Maybe price wants to push up to, you know, the level, see the breakdown level we saw yesterday. So maybe 111.81 or so, which is not that far away. Maybe it goes all the way to 112, uh, and then potentially move down lower. For now, uh, you know, the trend is uh, bearish uh, below 112.48. People are now net long here, so I don't really anticipate uh, the market to. Uh, move substantially uh, higher, uh, rather just move up and then down according with the downtrend. Next support level to I is 111, followed by 110.60, which is the low uh, on the daily chart. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, pound versus the US dollar. The pound dollar uh, tried to move up higher today. It looks like it was just you know trying to test this high and. Uh, you know, didn't really get too much of a reaction here uh, for the move to the upside, which I think is fair, just because price rallied quite strongly here over the last two, three days. And uh, usually price needs to pull back before heading up higher, uh, something we haven't seen. Um, but the trend, you know, it remains bullish above 144.35. Just take a fib from the very low to the very high. And uh, according to the Fibonacci, um, you know, the first level to expect the bounce from is 145.73 uh, and then followed by 145.47 uh, which also happens to be you know the little high here so this is 145.48 to be exact which happens to be this high here and so I guess you know we might have a 50% pullback you know kind of touch support and and then potentially price heading up higher uh, doing something like this. Now, I wouldn't get too excited here. I mean, the trend is bullish. People are short. So maybe price is going to reach this May high. Um, but I prefer Euro Pound being a better uh, currency if you want to be bullish the, the Pound Dollar. And the reason for that is because uh, the Euro dollar is lower, and we're going to look at it in a few minutes. The Aussie dollar as well, NCD USD is also lower. So I'm finding it a little bit odd that the uh, pound dollar is still fairly strong and robust, whereas 
the dollar is clearly gaining versus the other currencies. So I have a feeling that it's more of a matter of time before the pound dollar is going to align itself with, say, the euro dollar. Um, so rather, I want to work with the uh, euro pound. You know, it is bearish on this daily chart, as you can clearly see here. Price traded below last week's low uh, yesterday. And it looks like a big head and shoulders pattern, maybe 75, maybe all the way down to 73.24. Uh, could be interesting um, before price stalls. Um, the motivation for the pound to gain versus the euro is low likelihood of a Brexit. Uh, so I just pulled a fib from more or less the high up here. Uh, all the way down to the current low and uh, I would guess that a push up to uh, the first fib which would be 76.58 maybe all the way up to 76.75 uh, like any levels here probably get met, met by sellers and they're gonna try to push price down lower here so any any push to the upside I think it's going to be met by sellers over the next few days and then eventually for price to move down lower. I see no reason to change my bias as long as you trade above these highs here. Obviously, I just pulled a fib. And if it's a generally strong downtrend, <laughs> then people are not going to wait too long. Really, you shouldn't trade above the third fib here. You can see this is a discount. You know, this is a 38 percent discount this is a 50 percent discount and this is 61.8 percent discount so if someone really wants to buy something you know they'll they'll buy at the first discount level and if they're not sure they'll buy at the 50 percent discount level and if they're really not sure they might buy at 61.8 but if it goes all the way up to 77 and above then uh, you know you're getting a big big discount and obviously it w would tell me that people are generally interested to short the euro pound so I don't really expect price to trade much higher than 77. Instead, you know, first fib somewhere here. I think it makes perfect sense, but my extent slightly higher. Next market we're gonna focus on is gonna be the dollar yen, and uh, the dollar yen is pushing up higher here. So you've probably seen stock markets are quite bullish, and uh, it looks to me that you know the idea I talked to with you guys about a few days ago that maybe this was a high that appears to be uh, prematurely that idea and uh, you know the trend is bullish uh, about 109.10 now and you know if it, it's going up to this high but for me to turn really bearish I really want to see a break to this level if it does you know 107.50 is the next kind of support level uh, that sticks out and until that happens price might actually try to go up to 110.70 try to break that level and that would put this high in play here which is 111.88 uh, now given that the big picture trend is bearish and it has been bearish for quite some time as you can see here since March your price has been trading down lower I do prefer the downside and that's really the only thing I'm focusing on here the downside so I'm looking for a break to 109.10 Aussie dollar remains bearish you know pushed all the way up to the levels we've seen over the last few days uh, but the trend is bearish below 72.60 so as i said yesterday and the day before you know uh, these pullbacks and this is a four-day ema people be using that to sell and uh, for now the trend is bearish below 72.60 uh, so i don't see no reason to uh, you know kind of turn um bullish here until we break that level rather pull back seeing here's probably by sellers some price could go down to 7105 um obviously price has been moving down for quite some time you know we turned bearish already here at 7520 we reached the first target we more or less reached the second target here so maybe it needs a few more days a few days of sideways trading so obviously this is not the time to be very very short this currency pair it was the time to be very short this pair at 7520 um so we need to be careful because if it does go above 72.60 then it's just going to end this downtrend ncd usd no change here in the outlook i'm um, just bearish below 68.10 which is as high as you see prices are creating lower lower highs you know and as long as you're at level i suspect people might look to sell here for a push um, down to 65.70 this is the FTSE 100 and uh, you know price breached the 61.95 high which is the level uh, we spoke about um, as the first like major target uh, on a break to 61.95 uh, the trend is now bullish here 
in the short term above yesterday's low, which is 6108. And, you know, a pullback here, say to 61.95, is probably going to be met by, uh, by support and buyers, I would guess. Um, so this is like the first level here as well. You know, we can just pull a Fibonacci from the low to the high. And it's just at least that, you know, this will be a 50% correction. You know, maybe it wants to go down to 62, 14 or so. Like the really good entry was, of course, here uh, yesterday afternoon. Next market is going to be the DAX. So the DAX 30 uh, breach is high today. Now, the fact that this breach is high today suggests to me that the breakout in the FTSE 100 is more likely to continue to, oh, oh sorry, more likely that's going to be a, um, a correct signal or a, a true signal, that's a better word. Yesterday, when we did the afternoon video, it was just the FTSE which was trading higher. And given that it was just one market out of the three that we watch, I wasn't too encouraged. Um, and I'm not 100% certain that this is uh, the best way to play the markets going forward either, just because some of the data has been bad. Uh, and so just a very soft uh, PMI uh, services, ISM services. Um, sorry, PMI, sorry, ISM, man, sorry, yes, ISM manufacturing. Um, but the market is ignoring that for now because, you know, you have the service sector and then you have the manufacturing sector and the manufacturing sector looks to be soft but the service sector is obviously doing pretty strong you already seen retail sales published uh last week right um indicating a strong uh, a relatively good pickup in us gdp growth and today we get the market us services pmi and it's going to tell us if the service sector is doing all right in the us or not and i guess if those numbers are good then that may translate into, you know, further bullish move in stock markets, um, at least for now. Now, trading this in the short term, you know, the break here at 10,111, something to work with. So you can see the market just gapped higher today, uh, as it looks here, and it had a little bit of a pullback. German IFO numbers published earlier today was better than expected, which is a bullish thing. And... Uh, I guess price is not going to head to uh, the next high, which is 10,254, followed by the uh, next low, which is 10,336. Sorry, yeah, 10,334, yeah, really. Um, so that's something uh, I think makes sense. Uh, short term, you know, the actual low is down here, <laughs> which is quite far away, unfortunately. But we can take a fib. And we can use the rationale I mentioned earlier, and that is that if if it's a genuine uptrend, then people are not going to wait for price to move back, you know, too much. You know, 61.8% discount, yeah, okay, that that could that could work, but uh, probably not the uh, the thing one would expect if this is a real genuine uptrend. I just loaded my pivot points based on the daily chart. They suggest that you now we should just be bullish above 90. 882 so that's something to to work with so i'm just going to be bullish above this level so that, that would be 98 70 yeah 76 that's the level um so i would guess you know i would be very surprised to trade all the way down here rather the breakout level 10,111 maybe 10,041 uh, all the way down to 10,000. I think this would be the prime spot to kind of look to expect this to move up higher. This is the S&P 500. And, uh, you know, it's trading above this high here, which things are turning bullish here. And um, again, a little pullback maybe to 2065 is something that people are going to be looking at. Uh, crude oil. See if I can load the chart. This is the four hour chart. And I don't know if you remember, but yesterday we said, and the day before that as well, we said a pullback to these levels here could probably be met by buyers, which happened. Reason for the move to the upside here is a bigger draw 
So inventories declined in the U.S. gave price a, a boost. Why? Because if there is less of something, then it's quite likely that price is going to go up. Um, so that boosts the price. And I guess if we would move back to the lows again, people are going to see this uh, again as an opportunity to be long and bullish. Why? Because we're in an uptrend. Now, is this the best thing to be long at? Probably not. I think the market is up with 86% since the lows. And, uh, you know, this is going to end one day, of course. But things are not really too good right now. You got a lot of supply disruption, primarily in OPEC countries. And then you have, obviously, the big fires we saw in Canada that is uh, limiting uh, um, uh, you know, supply has lifted price up higher, uh, but most professionals think that this is probably a good level to hedge. Uh, in other words, if you're a producer, a lot of people probably hedging at these levels, just because some people say it's fairly unsustainable in the short term. Um, but who knows? You know, hurricane season starts uh, on June, and uh, now you have the weather phenomenon called uh, La Nina. Um, which tends to cause bigger issues with hurricanes, at least historically. So hurricane season should start from June and should last until September um, in the Atlantic Sea. So that might be something that may affect, uh, you know, crude oil production, particularly in, in, in the Mexican Gulf. Um, can create volatility. Maybe it's going to lift price higher. I don't know. Um, my gut feeling tells me that we gain already quite a lot, and this is not the time to be bullish. Rather, it's time to be less bullish. Now, again, technically, you know, the same way as the market went from 110 or so all the way down to 26, 27 dollars a barrel, maybe it's gonna push to the upside. Uh, so for now, you know, technically, I'm still bullish about 47, 35, which are these levels. And I think people, if it goes down, people are probably going to see this as an opportunity to be long. Uh, the alternative, uh, which I think is probably a higher likelihood that that's going to happen today, is just a break to 49.81, which may lift up to price to 50.75. Now, the next market I'm going to be focusing on is going to be the price of gold. Gold is moving down big time now. Uh, 121, oh, sorry, 12.21. 50. That's what price is trading right now, according to my chart. Uh, next major support level is 1207. And the dollar, obviously, the fact that we might see a rate increase on June 15, that is what's triggering this move. Um, if we don't have that rate hike, then as you probably can guess yourselves, uh, you're going to have a quite a big move here in, in, in the dollar. Um, I think the likelihood of getting a rate hike right now is about 30%. Um, that's what's price 10. So, you have a quite big swings here. For now, though, you know this is, uh, you know, just trading uh, above a major high, and you know people bought here in March, they bought here in February, and they bought it fairly close to this level in in April as well. The fact that we are at support um, makes it silly to look to buy, rather, so look to sell. Um, only if we trade below 12.07, I think at that point, you know, that might open up for a. A steeper decline, a big pullback. Uh, just looking at this chart, there's really no support until we reach something like 11.14. Fib-wise, though, you know this is just the first fib, and uh, maybe I'll go to 11.74, followed by 11.44. I mean, these are some big levels to watch. The better market to work with, if you're betting on lower precious metal prices, is the price of silver. We talked about this yesterday. I said the trend is bearish below 16.54. We had to push all the way up to the sell zone. As you can see here, this is the sell zone. People sold in this region and the price declined. And it didn't go all the way to the target we looked at, which is 16.09. It went all the way down to uh, 16.14. Uh, might touch that level later on today. I guess if we would push to the upside here, then things haven't really changed. But obviously, we do not want to see price trade above these levels now. Um, so I'm just going to be bearish below 1650. <coughs> Sorry, I'll be bearish below 1645, which is the level just above yesterday's high. 
break this level and you may get a bigger short squeeze. I don't know if you remember, but we were bearish from 1681, had a big nice decline, reached the first few targets. We are at support really. So I wouldn't get too carried away with short positions here uh, just because, um, yeah, just because uh, we're at support and people bought here in, in April. So they might do that again. Okay, it's 10.48. Let's see if we can answer some questions. Hey guys, thanks so much for your nice feedback here. Gotta... Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. It's a very nice and uh, nice and sweet comments here from you guys. Thank you so much for for all of this. I'm obviously going to be around. Uh, it's just that my uh, venture here with FXCM and Daily FX is going to end. Uh, hopefully we get someone to replace me. I'm not really sure exactly uh, what um, Daily FX has planned. Um, yeah, I think we started the first bull versus bears. I think we've been doing this for about four years now, so quite a long time. And uh, you guys have been great. I mean, some of you guys have been here since then, which is really, really cool. And uh, it's... You think you're learning, but I'm learning as well, just because every day I look at these charts and obviously it forces me to think and also reinforces like good behaviors. So it's, uh, I think it's been as beneficial for, for you guys as it has been for me. And uh, it's been uh, lots of fun here. Okay, I don't have any questions from you guys uh, about the markets. Um, So I think we're going to finish now. But again, I want to thank you so much for joining me. And uh, just a reminder, this is going to be the last bull versus bears. I'm going to do a uh, London session review. Um, but then after that, that's going to be it, really. And obviously, if you want to get hold of me, you know how to do that. I'm still going to be watching the markets. It's just going to be in a different capacity. Okay, so you got a question from Craig here. Uh, what about Euro Pound? I'm running four lots, which is just adding on a pullback or break to the lows. So I am looking at the Euro Pound, and I would personally like to add on a pullback. I am short from 77.25, uh, so I'm up with about 100 pip here. And I think, you know, according to the pivot point system. This is the pivot point system based on the monthly, and it, it suggests that we can move down to 75, which are these levels here. I think that's going to be level I'm going to look for. And obviously, for this to trade substantially lower, I do want to see people turn less short because they're short. So we're actually not going against the crowd here. We're actually trading with the crowd. Now, as well, we know that the reason for this is the less of a likelihood of a Brexit. However, if you look at how things they looked at before, uh, the lead that the Remain campaign has, in other words, the lead that people that want to stay in the EU has, isn't too much different to what we've seen in February. It's not a new trend. It's not that they have taken so much lead that it's impossible for the Brexiters to uh, you know, be able to catch on to or, you know, gain back. So this could change really quickly here. Uh, but for now, the momentum and trend is bearish. So I think at least 75, if it goes down to 72.50 before the June referendum, then I will be very, very, very happy. Now, I can just tell you what I'm doing. But given the fact that I, I am afraid that things can change fairly quickly, I am personally going to look to add on a pullback, um, and I'm going to look to add here, somewhere here in the middle, 
and my initial stop loss was up here at 78.62 so I'm gonna put that now at 77.58 uh, now I think for now I will look for a pullback and obviously always when I'm adding to a position I will need to calculate how much do I lose if I get stopped out here and how much lose I get stopped out on my second position um, and I need to ensure that that is not too much for, for me it's usually one and a half percent maximum two percent probably one and a half this time around so I'm gonna do that uh, and then when we go down to the lows again I might look to short again just because I will probably be able to put the stop loss if it's here I'm gonna be able to push it down to whatever high here when we break here <laughs> if you're already heavily short then probably uh, not the best thing to to add to more bearish positions here so that is something uh, I would uh, be very very careful because prices may move up higher here and you might get hurt thanks so much Craig thanks so much Ken and everyone else here Luca thanks so much Norm Okay, guys, I need to finish here, and uh, I hope you have a good day, and Thanks so much, guys. Thanks so much, Papa Whiskey. Thanks so much, Craig, Norm, Luca, Ken, CY, Pierre, Trey Time, Guest, and everyone else probably that can't access the chat right now. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a good day, and I'll hope to see you guys soon. Thank you, and goodbye.